They're going to know, you know, my side of a lot of events that have happened. And I think they're going to uh, hear me speak for the first time about a lot of things that happened. And uh, maybe to bring a little, a little good feelings back, you know, and, and take a break from all the hate and the pain and the, all that crap that's out there. And that's why I wanted to do this, a big part of it. So... What have you been doing for the last 20 years? <laughs> last 20 years. Um, I have been, uh, you know, this is, this is probably one of the hardest answers to a question that is, sounds simple. Uh, do you want fake news or real news? Real news. Uh, the truth? The truth? You want the truth? Yeah. You want slick or you want unrehearsed? You want un you want it from the heart. Okay. And and I think um, you deserve it. You deserve a lot of the you know from the heart stuff because I disappeared because there was a uh, I think a lot of things began early '90s and. Uh, there was a, a d discovery that there was uh, a lot of royalties that, that were owed to me from my, my, my friends, you know, my band, and uh, they were a tremendous amount of money, at least as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I really tried to see if we could have avoided any, 
any litigation, any lawsuits, any problems. And I spent four years. I spent four years from 91 to 97 with and just saying, don't you think we could do the right thing and make this make me happy? You know, there's been nothing that uh, nothing but great memories that we did together, and the records we made were great. And uh, it was a time to, that I needed to resolve with me that would have made most of the things that I had done in my career make sense. And uh, unfortunately, my my very dear friends didn't feel that way. And uh, it surprised me because a lot of the, the uh, you know, a lot of the, you know, when people work for a living, <laughs> you work to get paid at the end of the week. With musicians, it's, it's different because a lot of that happens six months down the line, 12 months down the line, you know. In the work you do now, you usually don't get paid for till you know, 12 months later, and sometimes 18 months later, but it takes all that time for, for sales to accumulate and for all the, the royalties that, that are derived from these sales to find their way you know, into accounting, and it's a really long process. But you know, we're talking about 20 years from I don't figure 1980, 82 to 97, which is, you know, it's, it's what, 15 years. And that's, that's a lot of royalties and a lot of time, that a lot of accumulation, a lot of records. And so there was a tremendous amount of royalties that were owed. I tried so hard, so hard to make it, you know, work so we could have been friendly and amicable about all of it. And uh, again, my, my dear friends uh, did not feel that way. So I really had no choice. Uh, and I had to file a lawsuit. And it was not anything I wanted to do. And uh, instead of someone saying, listen, you know, just take care of Vinny, you know, it didn't turn out that way. And when you have a family, when you have a mom, a dad, you know, whatever, you want to let them see, you know, the, the fruits of your labor, your talent. And it was important for me to, to let them see it while they were still here. And, um, you know, I've got a family, you know, I've got kids, and it doesn't just affect me, it affects everybody. So. It went on for 20 years, and uh, it was unnecessary. In my opinion, it should have never happened. And after 20 years, we finally put it to bed, and we settled it. And I just, there was really no need for it, because I love them, you know? These are my, these are my close friends. Uh, we shared some great, great, Great songs, great memories, great playing. <laughs> Regardless of what you know, you are being told. My memories of it were, were, uh, you know, they were fantastic. I was young. I was. Uh, this was what I wanted more than anything in life. You know, I wanted to be in this band because I think I could make a difference. I feel what they feel. I feel what they write. I, you know, I could remember Gene saying to me, you'd be great for the band, but you're too short. Yeah. So I said, well, that's what you're basing this on, you know. So those were the early days, you know. Those were the, those were the days where um, I said, I'm not going to let you say no. You're not going to say no because this is the right thing that, that's going to happen. And uh, it did. So I'll answer everything you guys want to know. You know, I'm here to tell you as much as I can tell you. And I'll, I hope to fill in all the gaps that you, of everything you want to know. And just getting back to a little bit of history, how, what's the real story about how you joined the band during the Creatures era? When Ace, they sort of said Ace was in, but then he wasn't in, then ads appeared with you in it. And they really didn't talk about it publicly as an announcement. 
my memories of that were uh, began in 80 to 81 and kiss were as far as I can remember they were uh, they booked a couple of studios at the record plant in Los Angeles and uh, I had a 19 <laughs> I had a 1965 Dodge Dart you know that didn't have a floor in it you know, so when I was driving, you could see the you could see the street go by, you know? and I said, "Kiss is recording there." Whoa, you know, so I got to be in that band. Somebody said they're looking for a guitar player. I said, "That's me." You know? So um, I made every effort to to meet them, and one thing led to another. I was recording demos. I had songs, and I was you know that was that was my life. Recording my demos, you know. Usually they were, you know, when you when you don't have any money, you, re, you just whatever way they sound. When you're finished, that's it. You know, good or bad. Your time's up, you know, and you're out of money, but you're recording these things, and you hope that something you wrote is good. So, I wrote a song called "Back on the Streets," and it <laughs> it, it, it worked. It, it's found. It found. Thank you. Uh, is a song I always like, but it found its way um, into Michael, not the Michael Jackson singer, but the Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson, Michael James Jackson. Michael is a great guy. I really liked him very much, and of course, I'm I'm just a kid, green, but wanting, wanting, wanting. Oh God, I wanted this so bad. So he said, I think this is a great song. This would be great for, for Kiss. We're recording a record. And that's how it happened. That is exactly how it happened. And so they were at the record plant, and, uh, uh, you know, it was like the first time we... Actually, what Michael had said to me was, I want you to write with Gene and with Paul, because I think I, there's something here that is common to to Gene and Paul and you. And of course I hit it off. Eric and I became real fast friends, you know, Eric. Eric was, yeah, God, he left us way too soon. He was like uh, the nicest person you'd ever want to know. Funny, my God, this guy would, you know, it's just one after another and you know, you'd be on the floor and never get up laughing, you know. So he was a, he was a wonderful person. Um, and he was, he was a person that, uh, he was an advocate. He wanted, I, th I think from what I could remember, he wanted me to be part of the band. Our writing started to happen and it was good. It was really good. We had something that is hard to explain to people, but, and I just felt that this was my dream to be in this band. This, this was everything I had always wanted. It was like being in the Beatles, you know? And, and uh, we wrote, I love it loud. I never forget that. We were just one after another, after another, after another. And we had so many songs. And it, it just became this, this cornucopia of music that started to happen. And I'm thinking, God, this stuff is really good. Am I really doing this? Is this really happening? You know, is, I'm living this, but I can't believe it's happening. And uh, I could remember um, we were writing these, these uh, I love it loud. I remember it really well. Um, uh, Killer was another song we had done that, that I remember really well. And uh, I mean, the memories that go around, that, that are attached with this are, 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 are in, in, incredible memories. I used to meet Gene, at the time I think he had a relationship with Diana Ross, and I used to meet him uh, at her house. She was not there, but she had this big cavernous r living room. It was like about the size of this room, but this really high ceiling, you know. And we just got, you know. And uh, down to down the medicine, no, 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 you know. It's a guitar and a voice, and these lyrics are coming out, and you're going, ah, oh, I love it now. You know, and this whole thing just, just began to just instant. It was, it's almost like it wrote itself, and a lot of songs were like that. 
So after all of this, I know this is a long story, but after all of this, this writing and this, this, this natural relationship, musical relationship formed, um, there were still guitar players coming in to the recording studio. And I said, I don't know, you know, I'm right here, you know. I mean, I don't know why you're doing this. Do you want me in this band or do you not want me in this? No, we want you to stick around. Yeah, but you know, I mean, what have you got? You got a hundred guitar players right you now. Every day you got hundreds coming in, you know. I'm watching them come in, they're going out. And they're a lot better looking than I was. And I mean, these are like Greek gods that are coming in and playing. I said, ah, oh, these guys got the job. Look at them, you know. And then another guy comes in, perfect, Mr. Lu Mr. Perfect. I mean, you look like gorgeous. You need to go, ah, oh, this guy's got the job, you know. Then another one, I'm going, oh, I don't stand a chance, you know. And, I mean, and they're tall, they're six feet, you know. And I says, oh, this guy's exactly what they want, you know. And the, 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 the L.A. thing is like, ah, oh, I don't stand a goddamn chance here with any of this. So, uh, so who makes the call to you? This, this is the best part. I think this is the best part. So the record was over. We had done the record, and I, I went home. I said, okay, Benny, thanks a lot. I said, okay, good luck. <laughs> good luck. I said, I, I said, I wish I could have been in the band, but, but I love you, but thanks so much. You know, this is like the best, best experience of my life. And wow, I can't believe I got like five songs on the Kiss record. So I went home. And uh, uh, my, my, uh, my wife at that time, her name is Anne Marie, and she was pregnant. And uh, hold on, guys, it's okay. Uh, so she was pregnant. She said, Well, did you get the job? Love you, uh, I'll be alright. You said you. <laughs> you guys said you wanted it from the heart, so that's what I'm giving you. So she was uh, she was pregnant. I didn't know we were having twins. So she said, "Did you get the job?" I said, uh, "No." So Gina Paul and the band flew to New York, and uh, I just remember, you know. I remember we had no furniture in our apartment. We had a black and a black and white TV, and uh, so I can't remember who called me. I think it was their tour managers. Vinny, we want you to come to New York and play a solo for. It was keep me coming. We want you to come fly to New York, so I did, and. Uh, I played the solo, everybody was happy. And I said, well, see you guys, you know, thanks for having me back. And uh, I was at the airport and Eric took me to the airport. I think it was LaGuardia. And I'm getting ready to get on the plane. He says, don't leave yet. I said, why? He said, just, just don't leave. I said, cancel your flight. And so I think it was, I think it was Gene who said, cancel, cancel the flight. We got your hotel. We want you to stay and uh, we want to rehearse with you. So it was step after step after step after step. And uh, so I remember calling home back to LA and I said, you, I think, I said, I don't know what's going on. I said, but I think, uh, this is going to be something that I'm, you know, I don't want to even imagine what it is because I don't want to jinx it, but I think something's happening. We rehearsed and, you know, I used to do like uh, these, these guitar solos and get on my knee, you know, and they go, why are you going get on your knees for, you know, and I said, well, I don't know, you know, it's what I do. So um, we had, uh, the, the rehearsals were great. I mean, we were, it was really electrifying, you know, and we gelled. The music was 
really electric. I mean, it felt, I could feel the electricity, you know, like I've never felt it with anybody. So, uh, we said, I remember this was it. Well, thanks a lot. I think this, we'll call you. And I'm thinking, geez, okay. So I said, Eric, you got to, I booked a flight. <laughs> he says, I'll take you back to the airport. So I was like, my head was, was hanging, you know. And I said, thanks, Eric. It was great seeing you, you know. And um, they said, I really had like the best, best time in my life. This was incredible. What, what a memory. So getting on the plane again, turn around, wave into him. He says, see ya. And then I remember him running back. Vinny, 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 wait, 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 wait. Come on. I could just see him. Wait. I said, what? What? You know, I'm going, what? Hey, Vinny, come on back. So I, I'm just right going to get on the plane. And I remember him saying, and I came back and he says, uh, I think Gene wants to talk to you. <laughs> Again? I said, didn't we, I think, didn't we just go over this? Didn't this just happen? I swore we just went over this again. So, um, and I remember, I think it was Jane, and he said, um, we want you to stay, we want you to be in the band. And, I, I don't know, it's, it's too hard to, 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 to fill that emotion, you know? And uh, so we need, you, we need you to rehearse right away, we're starting the tour, and, you got a lot to learn, you know, and you got to take Ace's place. And I thought, you want me in those, in those, you know, <laughs> in that, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and it was one after another after another, but it finally, you know, became me. I became it. And they taught me everything. They taught me so much. And, uh, it, it was they, they were they were the best teachers in the world, you know. Nothing better, nobody better. So let me ask. So when you get the job, what is that call like when you call home? I can tell you exactly what it was like. I was sitting in the bathroom. I was, I was sitting, sitting in, the, in the in the tub. I was in the bathtub, <laughs> and it was a tub. Believe me, it was a tub, and I'll com it was like a. It, it was like no furniture in this place, and I remember I was finally home, and and Gene said, "Listen, uh, here's what's going to happen. Uh, we need you to come back, and go back to L.A. Come back, and this is how much we're going to pay you." And uh, I, I just, you know, I'm screaming. I'm sitting in the in the bathtub screaming, and I'm going, "Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh." And so he said, okay, see you soon. Got your plane booked. Here's the hotel. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I remember hanging up and I went, ah! you know? so it, was, it was one of those moments, you know. So uh, that was the beginning of it, you know, after, after many, many years of, uh, you know, driving a car that didn't have a floor in it, you know. So that did, was the beginning. Did you have to deal with any of the ace? sort of controversy that all of a sudden you were there and the original guitarist was gone and uh, ace controversy actually I think it was I was pretty well received you know I think so but I mean how this this was part of them ace was a, a beginning part of them so they all started together where I came in you know to replace somebody that was that loved and that uh you know, that's special, and uh, I did the best I could. You know, I did what was me, and I feel that whatever we became as a band took a while. It didn't happen right away. Uh, it, they, I, was, I was so new to them that it didn't feel, I could, I could sense in my world that I know you want Ace back. I think you do because how could you not want him back? I mean, he's he was part of you, you know. And I remember Gene saying to me, "No, no, 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 no. You're in the band. You're in the band." I said, "Are you sure?" He says, "Yeah, you're in the band." This was after the tour was going on, and uh, he would uh, we get in the limo after a show. He says, "You know that part over here where you do this? Don't do that. 
you know when you do this? That was good, don't do this. And so it was, he was the best teacher, you know. Uh, Paul was more like, what are we doing with Vinny, you know? Uh, but I knew, I knew that he was, I said, this is meant to be, you know, good or bad, this is meant to be. But I say, this is good. This is the good part that's meant to be. I said, whether, I said, I, I, would, I would say to myself in, in those days, he's wrong. He's absolutely 100% wrong because, because what they felt comfortable with was a world I didn't know, you know. And, and uh, they had... They had Peter, they had Ace, they started together, they made all these records together. They, it, was, it was like a, you know, it was like one the biggest thing that, that had ever hit the world in the rock and roll. So how could you not, you know, feel protective of, of that? To me that was, uh, you know, you, you kill for that, you die for that. And, you know, to have someone new come into that, especially in, as a guitarist, was real, t real tough on them, you know, and I, I knew it. But I also saw past that, I was looking way over there and I think they were looking back here, you know? And it, once we, once the Creatures album was, and, and the tour was done and Lick It Up began, then I knew we were, we were moving forward and things be really began to change. Did you know how special Lick It Up was when it came out? Uh, I didn't know, I, but I knew, I knew this. The, the new, the kiss with me that was moving forward, that's when I knew. That's the part I said, I'm a part of you now and you're a part of me. You know, when I first joined, I was replacing someone and trying to maintain, you know, the creatures was was still to me was a it was a really powerful lineup. Yeah. Eric was you know Eric was, God he was one of my favorite drummers, and and I'm not I I don't love drummers because I'm a drum machine type of person, you know when I put a drum machine on and I write a song to that that's how I feel it that's how I hear it. But Eric was special, he had that you know. He wasn't all just, he was, he was, he felt that, you know? And I don't get, I don't, I don't work with drummers that, that have that. He was one of the very few that had that, I know how this feels, you know? So together, the four of us together, by the time we got to look it up, it was a real band. It was something I knew this thing could go ever. This thing could go on forever, you know? When at, at the end of the, the makeup era, and you were doing the shows in in uh, Rio, what was the, the train of thought of the band at that point? That you guys were playing to over a hundred thousand people, but was the makeup coming off at that point, or uh, Rio, Rio? God, I, it was that was probably uh, <laughs> one moment where I think everybody is going. We're in a foreign country here. And there's like, uh, I think there was like 200,000 people and they're going crazy and the police are here and we gotta got get out of this alive, was what I somewhat remember, yeah. So did you enjoy it? Oh, hell yeah. But you know, there was so many people that you don't even know there's people there, you know. It was like an ocean. Like if you, if you stood on a cliff and looked at the ocean, it was, it was very similar to that, you know. Because there's so many people you just couldn't, couldn't really see until you realize there's 200,000 people here, you know. But it was uh, it was electrifying. I mean, you walk down on stage and, and the, 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 the deafening screams was, was enough to, you know, you could uh, levitate, you know. Yeah. Like off, off that energy. It was amazing. Well, I have to ask this. Did you save Kiss? <laughs> Damn right I did. <laughs> Good name for a book. <laughs> was there a point either in Creatures or Lick It Up that you kind of went, hmm, uh, this wasn't as fun as it was when I, I first got into this? 
No, it was always it was always fun. We were laughing all the time. Paul is the the funniest the funniest stand up comic. <laughs> he puts away everybody. He's he's like he gets the essence of what but he's like a Don Rickles, you know? Don Rickles, he's that kind of comic. But he gets the essence of what you are and it just blows it up and it's pretty funny. So I remember laughing all the time. You know, I'm 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 a comedian's best audience, so if if you're funny, I'm on the floor laughing. So uh, it, it, no, there wasn't there was no moment for me where it didn't work. It was always working. What was it like when the the, the team broke apart? When you left Kiss, what brought that about, and how did you feel moving forward? It, it was horrible. It was horrible for me, and uh, this was not something I wanted to do. I mean, this was this was what I wanted, you know. And I wanted to stay. There was nothing I wanted more. It, there was a contract involved, and um, I don't want to get into all of it. But it was not something that uh, I, I I felt like I could I could sign. As much as I wanted to, it was impossible. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I mean, if we're talking about if you wanted to know things, for the time I was in the band, um, my salary take home was five fifty a week, and I had two kids. They were they were finally born, and. Uh, I, I had no money for for a home. I was still driving a car that was like, you know, <laughs> I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want you know my wife at the time driving that car, you know. And and it was, I was I still remember like there was you know well, I know I'm contributing to this, but there's I'm I'm I feel like uh, you know I'm I'm not doing too well, you know this is not going too well, so. Uh, I kept asking for, uh, you know, just just pay me something that gives me a reason to still stay, you know, because at at some point when you're contributing and you're part of the the, the, the magic, you're part of the the mis mystery, you're part of the, the this machine that is working so well. If it was me, I'd say I'm not losing you. You're worth something to me. And I didn't feel that I was worth anything to them. And I, that was the saddest part of it for me because I wanted to feel that I was valuable to the two, to Gene and Paul. They, you know, Eric was, uh, Eric had his own, you know, arrangement with them and he was happy. Uh, I just, something, something that, that makes me feel like I can survive doing this. And after a while, to be able to say, I am in this incredible situation, this incredible band, I'm writing the songs, but this is where I live. This is, you know, this is what I have because these are the fruits of my labor, you know? And it's, it's like a job. When you, when you work a job and you, you're appreciated, you get a raise. When you work in a job, you're appreciated, they, they give you a different position. It, it's about the same thing. And I never felt that, uh, I always, uh, I didn't feel like I belonged, you know. I thought I belonged, but I never felt that uh, I was welcomed as, as a part of the band the way I would want it, want it to have been. So, at the end of the Lick It Up tour, the last I remember was, and that was the last we ever spoke, believe it or not, was at the end of the Lick It Up tour. Everyone was going home to write their songs for the record. And uh, I said, well, I got, I'll write some songs and I'll see you soon. And uh, a couple of months passed and I was in a recording studio and I had Boys Are Gonna Rock, Shoot You Full of Love, uh, No Substitute, Animal. It was all the songs from the, from the Vinnie Vincent Invasion record. <laughs> Thanks, and, and it, I'm, I was listening to the demos, and I thought, you know, this, these are really good. 
these are good. This would make a great Kiss album, you know. This this would be like, wow, imagine us, you know, with these songs now. This will be like after Lick It Up, after Creatures, and now we got this. I said, oh, these songs, this is for us. We had all those songs, and then we got Murder in High Heels on Animal. <laughs> Well, I, it, it was it was something that I wanted us to you know to have as is you know in Kiss, but they were not able to work anything out with me, and I was I was really sad. And believe me, there was you know I I don't think I had fifty dollars in my pocket. You know. Now, had you presented those songs to the band at that point, or no? No, because wow. they were they were saying, well, come on back, and I'm saying, well, you know. Please work something out with me, please. You know, so I never came back, and because they they chose not to work anything out with me, so I never came back. I stayed and recorded and recorded and recorded, and I'm thinking I don't know I'm gonna, yeah I don't know what my fate is because I believe in myself, but I don't know what next is. I know I've got this thing that I wanted so bad, this group I wanted so bad. And um, it wasn't, you know, they, I, I felt like they didn't want me, you know. And I, I didn't know why, because it was such magic that we had, you know. But either they wanted it and didn't want to pay for it, or I felt when people don't pay you, what, something that shows respect and worth, then, then they ultimately don't respect you. So. I took a chance. All I did was I recorded these songs, I took a chance, and I didn't want that to happen, but it, it found its way there, you know. So I remember quitting, but then I got a letter about a month and a half later saying that I was fired. So I guess what came first, you know, quitting or fired, I don't know, it doesn't matter, it's all the same. It was not something I wanted to happen, I can tell you that. And then, how did that sort of just bring you down or were you sort of motivated to, you know, I'm going to show these guys and I'm going to do this on my own? I had a fighting will and I knew that these songs were wicked. And I said, this is good. This was a mistake. You should have treated me good because this is, because this was the probably would have been, my opinion, one of the better, best kiss Kiss albums because this would have been the natural progression of where we left off with Lick It Up, you know. So I said, uh-uh, this is good. Uh, whatever is going to come my way, I'm, I'm, whatever is meant to be, it'll be. But my heart, my soul was in it, and I, I, whatever little bit of money I had, I kept pumping it in there. Then I found the singer, the voice, and then once that voice was on those demos, I said, that's it, you know? We found gold in the mine, you know? So, and then, and then it found its way to Chrysalis Records, because I can remember sitting, and I knew these songs were hot. We had, uh, I had three demos that were finished. It was Boys Are Gonna Rock, No Substitute, and Shoot You Full of Love. Those were the three demos. And I can remember sitting in record companies' offices, and, and I'm sitting there, and I know this. This is good. This is really good. And I'd always get, this is really good, Vinny. We'll call you, you know. And one of the best stories I remember was there was a, a big, big guy. Was in, a, in Polygram, he was a very high up executive who said, uh, I want to hear these demos, Vinny. Okay, well, here they are. And he says, uh, we're going to pass. And I said, you're gonna pass on these demos? Why would you do that? Well, we don't think it's right for us. I said, you don't think this is right for you? So he says, sorry, good luck with that, Benny. So this, a year later, the record comes out and I was playing a sold out show and this uh, executive from Polygram is, is out there and he wants to know if he could come in and meet me and shake my hand and congratulate me. So I said, is this the guy that turned me down at Polygrass? says, okay, bring him in. And he was, oh, what a great record. Oh, that's incredible. So 
it, it's funny how the business works, but you know, you just take a shot. If you believe in yourself, uh, if you believe that you have something good, follow your heart. It'll take you where, where you want to go, I think, you know? Yeah. You know, we've, we've got three days of Q&A, so I'm going to jump into a couple of the things real quick. Um, if you'll comment on um, that fans have been talking about for the last 20 years. Um, so, for example, the box set. By the way, is this honest enough for everybody? Yeah. 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 You sure? Yeah. Do, you want, do you want it a little bit more held back? Or is this, I mean, is you sure this is okay? You want to, you're asking for the from the heart, and this is it. So, if it's not boring you, then I'm here for you. I can sit here for hours doing this. I mean, <laughs> well, it's, it feels good to tell you this way because all the other the interviews I used to give in the 80s were just like bullshit. They were like, I couldn't, I can't stand to listen to them today because they weren't, they were fake, you know, but it was the time of publicity machines and, you know, press agents and this is what you need to say. This, this say it like this. And now, oh, you know, you need to act like this, act like that, and say this, say that. And, and I just would look at him and go, Ugh, you know, so I just said, you know, I never gave any interviews where I felt I was, I was honest and, and answered things the way I would answer them to someone else, you know. So when I see rock stars give these interviews still to the, to this day I, I just say well why don't you just tell me you know just say it you know and there's always this cover up to dancing there it's just never comfortable so i figured um this is either going to be comfortable for you or it's not going to be comfortable and i i wanted it to be comfortable for me and the only way i could do that was to tell you to tell it to you this way you know so that's why i'm um, hopefully you feel the same. So this, this lovely gentleman here, along with, where is the other lovely gentleman? James. Right James. There. These two lovely gentlemen flew all the way from Australia. 30 hours. 30 hours. James North. Seth. What's your last name? That's what I said. That's exactly, I got it right the first time. And these, these guys, thank you guys for coming. I'm so honored that you would come to see me and spend 30 hours on a plane. <laughs> wow. Australia? England? England? England. 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 Holland? Norway. Norway. Oh, my. I, you, you mean you're all here from these countries? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, my God. Thank you so much. Where? Mexico. Mexico. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is truly an honor. I am humbled. Thank you. This is really something. I do want to say... Um, Wherever you are, um, I want to thank, with all my heart, um, my, the Italian fans. Uh, they, they're always there, the Italian fan club. They are so beautiful, and I love you. Uh, I'm Italian, but I don't know how to speak Italian, and it pisses me off because I grew up in my home where people spoke Italian, my, my grandpas, and I never, ah, I don't want to speak that, you know, I listen to my, my I want to play my guitar and listen to the Beatles. Why do I want to speak Italian? Well, now I know why, you know. Didn't know it then, but uh, I also want to say thank you, and I love you to my Brazilian fans. They are just beautiful people, and I say thank you. I'm humbled and honored for, for your love and, and, and your support to me, so thank you, guys. Hello? <laughs> Good to see you. What's your name? Paul. Paul. Thank you for coming. Where are you from? Here. He's from here. <laughs> He's from here. There you go. So, so he why, came a long way. So why, after 20 years, what? You didn't want to talk to people. You didn't want to see people. You didn't want to do interviews. You really sort of became a recluse. You had your own sort of 
family and friends. Why, why now? Why 20 why years? Now? Yeah. Is, that, is that the question? Yeah. Right now? Because, um, because I will say a lot of people thought they would never see you again. I mean, that's, I can't tell you how many people said, we just want to know that Vinny is okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't know that, but yeah. thank you. Uh, there, 20 years is a long time, uh, a lot of things. I could remember 20 years when it wasn't a long time, you know, because nothing really happened. Or the things that happened were, were you know, they were part of life, but uh, something happened. I, there was some twist in the, in the road, and, and it was not a good twist in the road. It was like an accident happened, you know. And you become, you know, you lose an arm, you lose a leg, and it was kind of like that with me. The lawsuit um, was something that, that basically snuffed out my life for many years. And I had a, uh, a bad, bad marriage that didn't work, and the combination of the two was, was really not, not healthy. And, uh, and it was just like I used to tell a really close friend of mine, I said, you know that courthouse and that judge, they've got a, they've got a cemetery, they've got a morgue down in that basement. And I know they got a headstone for me down there, but I'm not, there's no way I'm stopping this because I'm a fighter and, you know, that warrior of, I'll, I'll fight to the death for what's right. And unfortunately it, it came to that. And part of that, part of a bad marriage, uh, bad relationship really took, took me out of, I, did, I had no life left, you know, it was a, it was a time where the only thing that was saving me was my guitar, you know. I look at that, I'm saying, that's still, that's me, that's all I do. And, and that would give me the reason to, to be still. And I, I, it wasn't a place I wanted to be, you know. I knew that I, I shouldn't be doing this, but it, be, it became all-consuming because either you straighten out the past, and if, if you do, one way or another, it's the past you resolve. In order to move ahead, you resolve the past. But when forces don't want you to resolve the past, you have a choice to make. And it's a difficult choice because you say either, either I need to put, to find the answer. You know, it's like, it's a journey. If someone's looking for an answer for something that, that is, you know, if, if you don't find that answer, you will never find peace. So I had to find the answer. It could have been achieved so easily, but the forces did not want it to be that way. So coupling that with, you know, personal, you know, relations that were not good. It's, it's, it's amazing how fast 20 years, it's like, shoo, and you, you know, one day you wake up and go, 20 years, you know? And then people, you know, I hear all the rumors and I hear all the uglies and all the hurts and the pains and the accusations and then that mugshot. And I said, you know, nobody knows what really happened. Nobody. It's, it's all, there is a, a narrative and there's no, there's no truth that, that can say, wait a minute, this is what happened. You're just making up a story. You don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're working off of a narrative and you're taking that narrative and making it your narrative. So nobody's ever heard from me. And, and I figured, listen, I'm not, a, I'm not an internet person. And I really just, I'm not, I'm not on social media. I know people are impersonating me. You know, there's a Vinnie Vincent Twitter account and I'm thinking, shame on you, you know? I don't, Dean, you shouldn't fool people like that. That's not nice, you know? And there's people pretending to be me that, that try to pick up, you know, propose to, to, to beautiful ladies, and I'm thinking, this is not right. Somebody comes out and says, I'm Vinnie Vincent, and I'm voting for Bernie Sanders. I'm thinking, oh, wow, God. So, you know, these are the things I thought, you know, if I don't come out and say, hey, everybody, you know, let's talk, you know, it's time to talk, then these things will start growing and growing and growing. And then, you know, 
They, they got, became so out of control that by the time you came around and said, I want to do this, I think the fans will love this. By the time that happened, then I said, this is the time. It's now, now it's, it's, it's here. Now says, God says, you got to do this. You know, that's what I felt like. So uh, that's why I'm here, because I said, somebody else is making this, planning this, because life is what happens when you, it upsets your plans, and then life comes around. So then life happens, and then all your plans that said, I, I'm just going to, you know, sit, play at home, and take care of my kids, my dogs, and, you know, have some fun, and, you know, I was looking for peace in the most desperate way. And I hadn't had peace in, in 25 years. I just wanted some, some peace, you know, of, of just harmony. And I began, began to really, really know what it was like to wake up every day and say, God, it's great to be alive, you know? This is some journey, this is some place. And, and that never occurred to me earlier on, but you know, it does now. So every day that I'm here and I'm above ground, I'm here with you, you know? We are still here. Everybody, you know, so many people have, are gone and we get to enjoy this moment, you know? And I'm here, as I wrote in my message to Jean, who I love very much, um, that I'm here to celebrate our, our music and our band and our times that brought so much happiness to so many people. And this is important to me now, you know? This really is. Do you still write and play regularly? Yeah, this is all I do. But people think I don't do that because I'm not making records and I'm, you know, you don't hear from me, but this is all I do all the time. So it's what keeps me Vinnie Vincent and my, my music and this is it. But, you know, the world changed and I don't know, you know, sometimes you just, when I'm not, when you're not part of a social media, you know, all you hear is, no, well, fuck this, fuck this, everybody, you suck, you suck, yeah, you suck, you know, you got wow, no, you suck, oh, I hate you, you know, I hate you, wow, this person's, yeah, I hate you, you're ugly, ah, you're, sh you're short, you're fat, you're bald, whatever, and, you know, oh, you stink on guitar, oh, you, oh, I hate Vinnie Vincent, I, I love Vinnie Vincent, then you just go, oh, I don't know. I don't know what this is about anymore, you know? I used to, used to play music and there were, you went to the store and you, you had rock magazines, you know? I used to be one of them. I thought, oh, this is a, oh wow, I'm gonna buy this issue. You, know, you take it home and that's what you had. And now everybody's, oh, the record sucks. You know? <laughs> this song sucks, and he plays too fast, and he does too slow, and you know, melodic, and it goes, da 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 Well, you know, I went through my, my fast uh, times at Richmond High. You know, <laughs> and, uh, you know it, was, it was the guitar player times, and uh, you know, was, they still are, but now I've learned, uh, you know. Okay, so we got this piece, then we mix it with this piece, and then we bake it, and it comes out this. So it, it, it's a growth time, you know, a time where you grow and you just learn and you. Your music changes and it matures and this and that and it's still there it's still what you do yeah. but it's taken on you know different dimensions i guess you know i won't co dare compare myself to anything because I, I don't do that but i know when the beatles went from she loves you to you know abbey road it, it, you know it, it was a growth you know it was time to grow you know although i love she loves you period you know could never get out of that but uh I don't know, how am I doing so far? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Mark, am I okay? Mark said to me, I don't know if I'd say, I'd say this, I don't know if I'd say this. I said, yeah, okay, I won't say it. And here I am, disobeying him. <laughs> you know, everything he told me not to do, I'm doing. I'm sorry. Do you forgive me? He's not going to talk to me all the way home. <laughs> well, here's a question. I can ask some more questions, or we are going to be here tomorrow again doing some Q&A, and should we get going to the autographs and photos and whatnot? What do you guys think? Yeah. 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 Move on to autographs and photos? Yeah. So yeah. you can meet Vinny face to face. Yeah. 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 You guys, I, as a kiss fan, see, now I'm going to get emotional. Oh. It oh. is so 
how amazing to be sitting here with Vinny after all this time. So I can't thank you enough. Sorry that uh, you know the haters out there give you all this uh, one 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 horrible story after another because you know it hurt me to have you guys hear this crap and I, I wanted a way to say here's what really happened you know and and it's in when you, when all you ever hear is you know these horrible stories you know. Lies become true, and the truth never becomes the truth, you know? And can I tell you that uh, when you were talking to Eddie, John Five from Rob Zombie's band uh, texted me, and he says, please tell Vinny I think he's the greatest. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you so much. I'm honored. Really, really honored, guys. Thank you very much. So give us a back. Oh, you wanted the box set. Oh, you want to talk about the box set? Yeah, yes. Okay, let's talk about the box set. Uh, labor of love <laughs> that I'm still working on. It, had, it took a 20-year detour because of all the horrible shit that was happening to me. And uh, I started it with, you know, 500 years ago and it was like cassette tapes. And I, I remember advertising, the internet was just new, and you know, there was no CDs at that time. Well, there was, but I, I, nobody was thinking that way, you know, not many. And I remember taking some orders and this lawsuit just sucked me into like a, it was like a, like a jet engine, you know? And it's like getting too close to a jet engine and, and you're gone. And, and that was what happened, and I spent whatever money I had was a lot at that time, and I spent it to create everything, and I never was able to, to, to you know, take the pieces and finish it. And um, things got worse and worse and worse in my personal life, and this, this thing, the people that, that stopped believing in me, and they said, I'm ripping them off. I mean, it hurt. It still hurts. It hurts a lot because it wasn't intended to be that way. So I am uh, so sorry that, that it caused you to, to not believe in me anymore. And I want, I'll be finishing it this year, God willing. And I have been working on it for the last four months and I pulled everything out. I actually got pretty far with it. Uh, all the boxes were created. The artwork alone took forever. And uh, the boxes were un unusual because they were large boxes, you know. And for CD box sets, I mean, usually they're pretty small. But this was, this was like something that I was really going to be proud to, to release. Because I've never been recording songs and writing songs and, you know, everything for, for you know, a long time. I've got really fun stuff with Kiss and Gene and Paul and our rehearsals and writing sessions and uh, with Felix Cavalier and with Laura Nero. I mean, it's just stuff that is so meaningful to me that I think would be meaningful to you. Um, there's a Guitar Mageddon uh, uh, songs in, in and, and recordings that nobody ever heard. I'm the only one that really has those. I sometimes hear these things that are on YouTube and they're like, that's not where it ended up. And the, and the quality was just absolutely horrible. Um, all of my, uh, you know, my, my sad songs, you know, because I'm a sad person, you know, even though I don't, <laughs> don't appear that way. But, you know, I've always been, you know, I, you know, I write a lot of songs like that, like, that time of year and stuff like that. And Love Kills and Million to One and uh, stuff like that. And I know I got, I got a, albums of that stuff. And uh, I started working on a new Kiss record. And I said, ah, oh, this would make a great Kiss record. So there's, there's a lot of stuff on this box set. Um, 
and I'm really, really working hard to finish it. And everyone who did buy it, thank God I stopped it early before too many people bought it. But everyone who did buy it will get a free, obviously, they will get, uh, get two copies for what they have waited for. And they will get some really personal, nice personal gifts from me as a thank you. And uh, I'm sorry, please forgive me, gift. So, hopefully it'll come soon. You wanted it from the heart, you know, that's what I'm doing. Now, just for the, the, the Kiss rumors with the, another farewell tour, if they did ask you to come back and play a couple shows for a couple songs, would you do it? These are my guys, yeah. These yeah. are my these are my 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 buds, my my family. Whether we, you know, families have fall out and families love each other, and I love them, you know. So of course, this is part of my past, my legacy. This is what we did together, and absolutely, of course. By the way, I think I have a nice story I want to share with you. Um, I was telling Eddie. Eddie Trunk, the story, and it's one of it's it's one of those life stories. I had an uh, an email address that I hadn't used in about four or five years, and the last time I used it was for certain you know a certain business thing that was going on. And once that business was done, I never used it again. So I hadn't checked it in about five years. Something. On Christmas night, about a month ago, on Christmas night, some force told me, why don't you just see if that, inter that, that email address is still there? And, you know, you better log in at least and see you know, if anybody's, you know, maybe you missed an email in the last five years, you know? So I log in, I'm thinking, oh, what was my password again? You know? So I go, oh, I think I remember. So I'm going through all my, my files trying to remember this stupid password. So I finally remember it, logged in, and I see three emails from Gene Simmons. I go, oh, <laughs> my friend. What? I thought he was mad at me. So, uh, and I'm looking at the dates of these emails, and one was from June of this, of 2017, and one was from Another one from June 2017, and one, there was one from July 2017. I'm thinking, shit, this is like six months ago. You know? I said, no wonder he's mad at me because I never answered him, you know? So I opened it up. Hey, Vinny, it's Gene, you know, we're, I'm putting out the vault. And I, I'm, I'm so happy to hear from him. You know, I'm so happy, you know? I mean, really, like, so happy. It's my old friend, you know? Yeah. It's somebody that, you know, taught me, you know, how to walk and talk, you know? And uh, so we're putting out the vault and uh, we're putting one of our songs that we wrote together on it. It's called, I Wanna Live. And uh, wanted to know if I, you know, if we could put it on. I said, yeah, of course, of course, of course. So I immediately said, listen, here's what happened. I told him, I said, I'm so sorry for not writing back. I love you dearly. Always have, always will. Uh, I said, I, I, I said, you said, you said something, you know, you hurt me because you said something about, you know, not wanting to work with me again. Well, why not? We love each other, and our music said it says everything. And I says, I think I understand why you're bad because I didn't answer you. So I love you, and you know, this is one of our one of my favorite songs that that him and I wrote, I Wanna Live. And uh, eventually, uh, he invited me down to uh, present it on stage to me, the copy of The Vault. And so, if you're interested, it'll be in April in Nashville. Gene and I will be together for the first time in many years for him to present the vault to Vinnie Vincent. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's it's meaningful to me. Thank you, Gene. Thank you, Gene. All right. Thank you.
you, Vinny. It's been amazing. Thank you, guys. And thank you guys for, for being here. And uh, give us about 10, 15 minutes. And we'll start doing some autographs and some photos. I just really want to thank everybody here. This has like, really warmed my heart. And I hope I, I made everybody happy. Thank you guys.